Investments, Norris Navarro Branham, Knowledge Born of Law, Basir Machawi, Edwin Breeze Barrow, Peace Be Upon Him, Ashra Kwesi, and Minister King Samir Shabazz. Peace family, welcome to How the Earth Became Civilized, a docu-series following the earliest civilizations on the planet, how they flourished and spread, and the so-called collapse of these many state nations and empires, whether it was due to conquering or usurping, or from famine and other natural disasters that have struck the planet and continue to this day. This is the very first episode titled, The Origins of White People. We'll be laying down the foundation of how the planet was originally populated with what scientists call the phenotypical sub-Saharan African and the appearance of what we call today the white race. And by white, we're not talking about so much the Caucasian men who at one time were phenotypically known as dark or brown-skinned people. But where and how did this phenotypical European white man as we know today come about? I've done a lot of extensive research on this subject, but as you can see, I kept this presentation short. So in a lot of cases, I might not have shown you the long division, so to say, but you can look at this piece of work like cliff notes or a protein bar. It might not be the full course meal, but it still has enough essential vitamins and minerals needed. Now you may often hear me say scientists say, or scientists claim. And with that being said, so-called scientists can say anything and make any claim that doesn't make it truth. But what I'm in fact saying is that in this particular episode, in such case, they are the leading theories agreed upon by anthropologists. So basically, what I'm saying is, this is what most of the leading anthropologists agree as the leading theory. And if you find any error in the information I have presented, feel free to contact me so that I could be corrected if needed. And I don't want to be perpetuating false information. So thank you for tuning in. I'm your host and the narrator of this particular episode, your brother, the pragmatic Che Black. And without further ado, how the earth became civilized and the origins of white people. These are the Batwa people, also known as the Twa and commonly mistakenly called the Pygmies of the Rivazori Mountains, modern day Uganda, Africa. And as you can see, the Batwa are very short in stature. These here, these are the Khoisan people. And like the Batwa, the Khoisan are a group of hunter gatherers, and also like the Batwa. They are the closest relatives to the oldest known people on the planet, the Hadza. The Hadza people of modern day Botswana, Africa, share the oldest known lineage on the planet. Scientists claim that these are the first modern people to ever walk the face of the earth. They're the descendants of the first modern man. So basically, if there was an Adam, this is what he looked like. Scientists claim over 100,000 years ago, the Twa and the Khoisan spread across the southern region of Africa, continuing to populate the rest of the continent before migrating into Europe and Asia, going as far as Australia, North and South America. Starting in the region of South Africa, leaving behind some of the oldest known architecture on the planet. This is Adam's calendar, South Africa. It date back 75,000 years ago the oldest known mason work on the planet. They introduced humanity to mathematics and the first alphabet system. They traveled down the Nile in the Sudan, Ethiopia, and Egypt, establishing what would be known as the Nile Valley civilizations. They stretched into the western parts of Africa. There you see the ruins of the ancient Nox civilization. They headed north, establishing the Mediterranean coastal state of Morocco. Look at these ancient buildings right here. Look at that. You see this city? That look like it could be somewhere in New York right now, fam. They crossed over into Europe, establishing civilizations, leaving behind the oldest known architectural structures in Europe. And not just Europe, but some of the oldest known monuments on the planet. 
This is modern day United Kingdom, Ireland. Look at the little people carved in stone. Remember the Twa people? Well, I'm sure you're familiar with the story of the leprechaun and his pot of gold. Well, all right then, let's continue. They traveled through the Middle East, branching off into the subcontinent of India and settling further into Asia, leaving behind their unique architectural footprint everywhere they went. You see the pyramids, family? That's China right here. Let's continue. They traveled the whole South Pacific. Here we are in Cambodia. Notice the artistic craftsmanship. These are some of the oldest monuments on the planet Earth, family. They headed down under in Australia. And the people who built these structures are still here today. They're known as the Aboriginal people of Australia. Scientists claim that these are some of the oldest modern people on the planet with a direct connection to the Khoisan people, with their DNA becoming isolated while alone in Australia for thousands of years. They came all the way up into North America, establishing great civilizations that consisted of federations and trade unions. These are the ruins of advanced civilizations right here in North America. This is Mese Verde, Colorado. Right here in our own backyard, fam. Some of these, some of these structures going back 3,500 years, 4,000 years ago. You see, you see some of the architecture structures still standing all throughout North and Central America. And of course, of course, they made their way into South America. And there you see the same architectural structure. You see that same unique architectural footprint. There you go again. You see them pyramids. Anytime you see a pyramid, you know what time it is, fam. These were black people traveling the planet. And they didn't just leave behind similar architectural structures. They left behind stamped symbols of a shared expression. One being the most revered symbol was that of the serpent. Here in ancient Sumer, you see the, the Sumerians' depiction of the serpent gods. There you see it again on the headdress of the pharaoh or the Nasut, as they would have called them, the Kemet. You see the two snakes, there you see them again. This is Ireland. They scared of snakes. All these stories, snakes are wicked or some type of evil deity. They scared of snakes. They scared of them serpents because them serpents represent us. And now they got you scared of snakes. They got you scared of your damn self. You all shook of the serpents. But that was who we are. The snake, the serpent people. You see it. You see it in India. Here we are again in Australia. You see the snake-like serpent creature carved in stone thousands of years ago. And here we are in South America. That's Quetzalcoatl, fam. The great serpent god. You see the snake-like body all throughout the planet. You see the same architectural structure, the same artistic expression, the same spiritual representations because these were the same people. And if that's still not enough for you, Let's see what these Europeans, the first Europeans who came to this so-called new world had to say. Remember this guy? The world's most celebrated, homicidal, homosexual, murderous, maniac monster Christopher Columbus wrote in his journal. The native Indians told him black-skinned people came from the southeast on boats trading in gold-tipped spears. He took some of these gold tip spears from the people and when he went back to Spain, they tested it. The, the, the meteorologists, they tested it and said that it came from Africa. It was African gold and the craftsmanship and technology was superior to that of the Europeans. This is what they said. Look at this old dirty drunken ass pirate Vasco Nunez de Balboa. He stated that he saw Negroes throughout the Caribbean island as well as the coasts and inlands of South America. And this necrophiliac looking Casper, late 18th century American explorer and author William Bertram wrote in his book published in 1791, Bertram's Travels, when speaking about the monk mounds of the Mississippi Valley, he stated he was told by the Cherokee and the Creek Indians that the mounds were constructed by the ancients many years prior to their arrival and possession of this country. So basically, before any white boy or red feather TP Indian stepped foot on this continent, black people was here first, building and creating. And if that's still not enough for you, we can go all the way back to the fifth century 
and see what the Greek boy-loving historian Herodotus had to say. He said, Africans in massive ships with great seafaring skills traveled the Atlantic West to what he called the other Ethiopia, which would correlate with ancient artifacts that they found throughout both North and South America. And they didn't just find ceramic dolls and, and old tools. They found what scientists claim to be black African corpses throughout North, Central, and South America. And if y'all don't know, y'all really need to start doing some research because your boy ain't just up here making stuff up. I'm, I'm, I'm just letting you know. Google, Yahoo, whatever y'all got to do. The Lenape people of North America tell a story passed down from generation after generation after generation. A story of how the people came from the regions of Southern Africa many moons ago. They traveled by foot heading east until they couldn't walk no more which led them to present-day New Jersey, lower parts of New York, as well as eastern region of Pennsylvania and parts of the Delaware Valley. This is the story of their ancestors and how they traveled the planet, establishing cities that rival modern-day metropolises and empires that lasted for thousands of years. They were known as the Great Walkers, and these are the children of the Khoisan people. So the question remains, if the whole world once looked like this brother, then how do we end up with him? Common belief is that Caucasians came from the Caucasus Mountains, hence the name Caucasian. The Caucasus Mountains is a mountain range located in the region of southwest Russia and northeast Turkey, and it sits in between the Caspian Sea to the east and the Black Sea to its west. It's not just the mountain range that separates Turkey from Russia, but along with the Orel Mountains in the north, it's also the border between the peninsula of Asia, what we now know as Europe, and the rest of the continent of Asia itself. Remember that great migration that took place 100,000 some odd years ago? Well, scientists claim that some of these same Africans traveled all the way up into the Ural Mountains of modern day Russia. And during that time, while they were up there, they got caught in the last ice age. And after being trapped in the ice for thousands of years, they re-emerged 26,000 years ago out of the Orel Mountains in modern-day Russia, entering in what is present-day Iran. The people of this rough mountainous region were nomadic tribes who had roamed around the outskirts of the Indus Valley and from thousands of years in lower climate temperature as well as geographical differences coupled with decreased incident ultraviolet radiation leading to genetic mutations in the PRS S53 gene causing the hair to thicken and straighten also developing the SLC245A5 and the SLC45A2 genetic trait which led to the depigmentation of the skin so scientists are claiming this where your light skin gene come from thus the people of the region entered looking like my man right here and left looking like these guys but that still doesn't explain where did this guy come from now as these nomadic tribes began to grow around the region known as the Indus Valley approximately 10,000 years ago between resources becoming scarce and warfare amongst the tribes some of them began their own migration and they headed east and it wasn't long before they came across the ancestral brethren whom I stated previously roamed, settled and established civilizations stretching across the planet in some cases they settled and peacefully assimilated amongst their ancestral brothers and sisters. There you see the Chinaman learning his specialized art of whip ass from his original black civilizer. And like I said, in some cases, they peacefully assimilated amongst their ancestral brothers and sisters. But in many other cases, they completely usurped the culture and its people. They traveled further northeast, crossing the Barren Strait into North America, some of them settling in Alaska and in the northern parts of Canada. The descendants are still there to this day, and they're the people that they call Eskimos. They traveled deeper into North America, 
as far as present day Mexico and in the South America. And just like their predecessors back in Asia, whether through peaceful assimilation or warfare and conquer, they usurped the culture and the people who were previously here. So what we know as a red native American Indian is actually the same nomadic Indus Valley Aryan Caucasian just like your Japanese, your Chinaman, your Indian, and the rest of these so-called Asians, then where did white people come from? Which takes us back to the Indus Valley, approximately 8,000 years ago, the nomadic Indus Valley tribes of Caucasians, known as the Yamnea and the Anatolia, would also migrate west, bringing what would become known as Indo-European culture into the peninsula of Asia as they now refer to as Europe. And when they arrived, these nomadic Indus Valley Aryan Caucasians came into contact with a Scandinavian tribe of Nordics in the northern part of Europe who had been there for thousands of years prior in the Norwegian region. The Scandinavian tribes of Nordics also held the SLC 245A5 and the SLC 45A2 gene as well as the mutation that scientists say occurred affecting the OCA2 gene which affects the production of melanin ultimately affecting the color of skin, eyes and hair. So these Scandinavian tribes of people not only had pale skin but blonde hair and blue eyes. Not to mention there was still a couple of these jokers floating around and well you know how that go. Some people they just don't care. So, as these nomadic Indus Valley Aryan Caucasians settled into Europe, bringing with them their Indo-European culture and interacted with these people, who scientists claim are mutated Africans, which although a very problematic claim, we'll save that debate for another day. Anyhow, they say mutated Africans who were trapped in Northern Europe during the last ice age for thousands of years and re-emerged in the Norwegian area approximately 12,000 BC. So effectively, turning these people, people, the Aryan Caucasians from the Indus Valley into this, and this, and this, and ultimately these guys. And there you have it, the origins of white people. And how black people, who scientists claim came from Africa, traveled the planet, cultivating land, building highly advanced civilizations, states, and empires, with a shared artistic expression and a distinctive architectural fingerprint. Images carved in stone meant to last the test of time, emphatically stating who these people were. Undisputable, irrefutable proof that they were, in fact, black people. You see, your ancestors, they were gods. And like gods, they saw into the future. They knew there'd be a day where you'd be lost from your own tongue, unable to recognize your own language, let alone read or write it. So they told you stories with images, images in stone. They say a picture speaks a thousand words, but these speak billions, telling you millions of stories called straight from the hands of your ancestors. Machu Picchu, Peru, the lost city. Imagine what this once looked like in its full splendor and glory. Tenaz Titlan, Mexico. Imagine what Hernan Cortez saw when he arrived here in the 16th century. Just imagine. Imagine what this looked like. Look at the architectural structure. Look at the look at the infrastructure. You see the pyramids. Whether Mexico, Egypt, China, Russia. And if there's a pyramid on Mars, then God damn it, black people built that too. We had advanced pre-Columbian civilizations right here in North America, established and built by black people. The first man-made architecture on the continent, built by our ancestors. So the question then becomes, if black people didn't just travel the continent before Columbus, but were in fact the first settlers of this land, building some of the oldest advanced civilizations on the planet, what happened to these people? 